This is an update on a story about the genetically modified salmon that grows super fast based on emails to Healing Grapevine so that we can give you some clarity on what's going on. The bottom line for you to understand is that the agency has finalized and determined that the salmon is as safe as food from conventional Atlantic salmon. Additionally, this salmon will be on the market as early as middle to late next year. What some people don't know is that Aquabounty Technology, based in Maynard, Massachusetts, has had this stuff on the market. In other words, they've been trying to get approval, not on the market, but trying to get approval for the last 17 years. That's a long time uh, to be working on genetically modified product. Keeping also in mind that the FDA has never had a question as to whether or not the salmon was safe to eat. They've only been waiting to rule on whether or not these salmon were safe for the environment. The fact that they've ruled so long ago already on the fact that these are safe is something that you should be aware of. But the story that most people are missing is that the major concerns uh, by the environmental safety groups about this salmon is that the salmon could escape into the wild and outcompete normal salmon for food or mates. And therefore, this is, you know, not that different than genetically modified food and crops and issues with Monsanto, that pretty much we would only have genetic, genetically modified salmon. This is not even really dealing with the issue as to whether or not these genetically modified fish are good for you or how they alter your own uh, protein metabolism and bioterrain is an entirely different question, one which at Healing Grapevine we are more concerned with. For me, the idea that this that the salmon are not going to escape is pretty laughable, but that's just my opinion. Again, we're dealing with the same thing that we dealt with with bioresearch um, that we believe uh, contributed to the uh, dissemination of Lyme or any other kind of genetically modified disasters. It's impossible to keep them, but you know, keep them at bay. You just, something's going to get out. This is just really part of how that, it's just natural for tenacious organisms to escape into the natural environment. So a little bit of insight on how the salmon are raised. First, the salmon will be reared inside the inland tanks in Panama that are equipped with multiple barriers to prevent escape. And even if some salmon do manage to pass the barriers, the surroundings of Panamanian waters would be too warm or salty for these Atlantic fish to survive. And this is the big defense that the company is using. And again, this is not a negative uh, PR spin for Aqua Advantage. We're not speaking negatively about Aqua Advantage. We're just looking at some of the risks that Aqua Advantage has to face when dealing with the issues of uh, a pretty revolutionary product, which is a genetically modified creature that is going to be given to consumers. There's also sterilization procedures and the rest that they've used for oversight. Aquabound rejects the fact that environmental risk arguments and assert, you know, they reject the idea that there's a risk and they assert that the accelerated growth of their fish and the shortened time to market may actually decrease their environmental impact by enabling them to be grown inland tanks instead of ocean pens that can wear on the ocean surroundings. It's important to point out that the FDA uh, only assessed how the salmons might affect surrounding, how the salmon might affect surrounding environments in the United States, but not Panama or Canada. So again, this is all a very loosely defined issue. And I think there's a lot more needs to be looked at uh, around this issue. Now, all said and done, outside of you know picking on Aqua Bounty or any of these other companies that are more and more moving into the genetically modified arena, which increases productivity and the ability to bring more food to market, the FDA's decision is a major victory for GMO. That's the main thing I want you to be aware of. Everything is moving in the direction of GMO. If the fish do end up on dinner plates across the United States, um, and it's very likely that they will, in fact, it's already been passed, the Aqua Advantage salmon could have a pre be a precedent for genetically modified foods of all kinds. You know, we already have a major precedent on vegetable and produce. But now we're moving up the food chain. And so no doubt we're in for prolonged battles between opposition groups and companies. Be advised and stand by, because we are moving into the future of major issues around modifying genes in order to provide increased food abundance, but lower food quality, in my personal opinion. I'm going ahead and state an opinion here. I don't think that nature has done it imperfectly. And I believe that the tenacity of natural evolution is far safer 
than us getting it around, getting in and trying to modify what has taken ev uh, millions of years of evolution to create and to evolve. And when we're modifying that, many, many of the repercussions that come about are not seen until several generations later after a profit has been, you know, economics has been the primary factor to drive genetically modified foods or ecologic, the ecological impact or ecologics is something that is hindsight. And of course, it seems obvious to most of us who are environmentalists and who understand GMO. I would just like to bring to your attention that genetically modified salmon is on its way and following genetically modified salmon is probably a dozen or more other gene mo genetically modified crops that are higher up in the food chain than food that you can be expecting to be major issues over the next couple of years. This is the healinggrapevine.com. We'll see you on the next video.